you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, Former Laurie, yes. you're back in town. <laughs> Why don't you, you let our audience know your name and what you are a former laureate for? Uh, my name is Kamran Vafa. I'm a laureate in string theory, high energy physics. Yeah, so very complex. <laughs> we're we're going to probably not try. Was there something specific about string theory that you were studying at the time when you... Uh, works related to black holes in particular, uh, which is uh, trying to connect uh, theoretical ideas in string theory to aspects of black holes which we expect to be true. And so some predictions that Stephen Hawking had made about black holes uh, which uh, he had anticipated were not proven, and we used string theory to actually derive his predictions. So that okay. was uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, okay. Whenever I think about string theory, yeah. it drives I, <laughs> well, I, I'm curious, like, do you often, I think for a lot of people, string theory is overwhelming. Is there a way to, that you, for someone who doesn't have a very great experience with science, yeah. like, communicate to them yeah. the, the simplest message of what it is? Yeah, so we usually think about uh, the atoms made of, you know, electrons, protons, these point, point-like objects. So what we learned is that if you want to include gravity as part of the forces, that doesn't work. And you need objects which are not point-like, but extended, like little loops, like strings. And that seems to be a fundamental fact of quantum aspects of gravity, which needs, instead of particles, extended objects like loops. But these loops are so tiny, we, we cannot see it in experiments. They are like, if you take uh, uh, 10 to the 10, 10 billion, billion, billion of them, you might make like a little atom out of them. So they're very tiny, so we cannot really see them, but it is needed for consistency of Einstein's theory combined with quantum theory, and that's the reason we study these. Isn't there some issue, too, with the amount of dimensions? Is that part of string theory, too, that like in order for it to work right now, we have to not be in, we have to be in more dimensions? No, we expect there to be other dimensions. Now, so three dimensions are big, but the other dimensions don't have to be the same size as ours. So they could be very tiny, so it's like, we don't see them around because they're and so we tiny. Know. We don't know. So, but aspects of what is going on in the ex ex other ones will give us our properties, like the, 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 how, how heavy a proton is or what are the forces between particles depend on these tiny little spaces, and detailed aspects of them will affect what we are made of. So the hope is that we can discover other dimensions and then it would, the theories would start to fit into that. Exactly. So the different aspects of these hidden dimensions will give rise to different aspects which we can see in our world. And so one of the big challenges for us is to figure out what these tiny spaces are. And the more precise we understand them, the more detail about our universe we can, we can find out. It's so it's really cool. cool. Well, it ties into a question that yeah. we've been asking everyone that our audience wanted to ask. Uh, because you see the world in different dimensions and in tiny spaces, how does that impact your view on life at large and the meaning of life is what they want to know. It's a, it's a good question. I think uh, it, gets, it gives us incredible feeling when we look at the night sky, for example, mm -hmm. to think about what's going on out there and you know, the black holes out there and you know, with these things that we study using simple ideas and then, you know, paper and pen and so forth has something to do with this vast cosmos. It's quite, quite an incredible feeling. Does it ever, does, do you ever get scared <laughs> when you learn about these things? Because I love reading about string theory and quantum physics, but sometimes I just leave and I'm like horrified because I just, it's so big and I'm like trying to be like, like brush my teeth or I don't know. It, it is, it is, uh, it is always this awesome feeling that, you know, the reality out there can be explained with simple ideas. Yeah. And it sometimes might sound too complicated, but actually the fundamentals are so simple when you think about it intuitively. And so... Part of the challenge for us is to make internalize it. And once you internalize it, it looks like everyday objects. So for us, these extra dimensions and all that looks like the regular thing. So it's after a while, it gets, gets to that yeah. feeling. So oh. that. Okay, our last question. Um, with the young audience, uh, very concerned about the climate crisis and climate change, as are we. Scientists, brilliant minds, what is sort of some advice that you have or what are you thinking in regards to the climate crisis as a scientist? I think we should be considerate about what we do to the environment. It's the, especially for the future generations. Uh, I mean, it's, it is one thing, one thing to ignore it and this is very disappointing and the other thing is just to, uh, just to have way to, to issues that are crucial and, and not studied in the context of science. So I think as scientists, I think we should be be worried if the message that this is an important scientific issue does not get through to the society or to politicians or whatnot. So I think it's an important thing and we should not underestimate its importance. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was a pleasure That's to meet so you. Enjoy your evening. Oh Thank gosh. you so much. Have a good Oh my evening. gosh, you severed string theory. <laughs> I know.